That is a terrible R. Arcades, placing your drink on the game machine. If that spills, you might get stuck with the repair bill, Larry. Also, ants. All right, give me room. Here we go. Thinking you need room for a stick-based arcade game. If it's a shooter with a gun accessory, maybe. But there's no reason the eight-year-old playing Defender next to you needs to hear your arrogant declaration for more space. Just keep your head down and contemplate your sadness like the rest of us. I realize a lot of people discuss the effects in this film today as dated. But to be fair, these effects were dated in 1982 as well. What's this game called? This is Light Cycle. It's literally written on the system just a few feet in front of you, so what's up with the question? Maybe spend less time in arcades and more time understanding how to interpret your surroundings. You're getting brutal, Sark. Brutal and needlessly sadistic. Is he though? Isn't he just playing the game the way the NCP wants all of the recruited programs to? He beat the other program in a simple light cycle race. There was nothing more brutal and sadistic going on than the race itself. Sark was just part of it. This? is all a mistake. I'm just a compound interest program. Within five minutes, it's clear that Tron is basically just a combination of Wreck-It Ralph and The Matrix, and those movies both played with these concepts in such better and more fun ways that I have to send this one for it, even though it technically came first. You believe in the users? Yeah, sure. If I don't have a user, then who wrote me? Here's where the movie starts to lose me quickly. The entire foundation of this movie is that each of these programs are attached to a single user. But how is that even possible? You're telling me none of the users created multiple programs? Every time a single user gets on a server, they have to create a program that is specific to them? That's not how computers work now, and it wasn't how they worked in 1982. I love the concept and the allegory of institutionalized religion projected onto these programs, but it doesn't make the setup any less false. Master control program's been snapping up all us programs, if you leave. If he thinks you're useful, he takes over all your functions so he gets bigger. Tron's position. It's murder out there. You can't even travel around your own micro circuits without permission from master control program. So Dillinger is senior exec VP at ENCOM, who supposedly wrote the code that created the MCP. And then the MCP has taken on a life of its own and is essentially kidnapping programs from other corporations. But how did the other corporations not notice this? The MCP told Sark earlier that he had gotten them some military programs from Strategic Air Command. How did the users and higher-ups at military-based corporations not realize programs are randomly missing? This would cause all kinds of problems, from military personnel files, missing data, to extreme situations like guiding missile systems acting up. All this tomfoolery would eventually lead to a bunch of pissed-off CEOs at ENCOM front door. Flynn getting proof he created a few video games seems very minor in comparison to all the bull Dillinger should really be worrying about. Reading! Also, are programs not part of the real world? This title should clearly be, meanwhile, in our world, or else you're denying the reality of your own world building. Or, better yet, don't include the text at all! I think we can figure out the difference between the two realities without being force-fed a text transition. Clue, we don't have much time left to find that file. This is top priority. Yes, sir, I know, sir. Is Flynn talking directly to the Clue program? How does that work? And even if we're supposed to think he's typing instructions out, what program would understand we don't have much time to find that file? And if he is typing, how is Clue answering him? Thank you, sir, but I'm not sure no that's clue. That's for users. Seriously, what the f is going on here? If Flynn was able to create a program he can interact with on this kind of level, what the f do a few stolen video game codes matter? Sell this AI program instead! Now you're the best program that's ever been written. Vanity. There are so many things about this movie's interpretation of the data world that make no sense. Programming by slowly typing out English sentence commands is probably the most egregious, especially considering all the action we see in the computer world is happening so quickly. There's too many of them! <laughs> What is he reacting to? Is he watching the movie we're seeing? Did he hear his program say there's too many of them? What is even going on here? <coughs> oh. Also, creating a computer program that screams like a child. No! I must have gotten in there by mistake! There are many people responsible for the finished performance you see on your movie screen, so this sin is for whichever one of those people decided to set this performance's Tommy Wiseau level to 11. Make it easy on yourself. Who's your user? I know Flynn got in the system undetected on a stolen password, but the NCP would have access to photo databases. Clue looks identical to Flynn. Forget it, Mr. High and Mighty Master Control! You are making me talk! And Master Control just believes him and eliminates him? I mean, maybe the program would have stayed silent, or maybe you could have cracked him. So why would you destroy him this quickly and leave yourself without a clue? These helicopter shots are stunning. They're simple, evocative, and beautiful. I know this movie was trying to play with technology that wasn't quite ready yet, but there's some visuals throughout that deserve a sin off anyway. Good evening, Mr. Dillinger. Thank you, Peter. You can go now. What was Peter doing? Guarding the window? Master is the password for access to Master Control. Was 123456 or password not available? Also, putting a period on your password. Everyone knows if your password needs a special character, you go with an exclamation point, because that is powerful! Hello, Mr. Dillinger. Thanks for coming back early. How is Dillinger even contacted to come back early? This is well before cell phones and texting, and regardless, who did the MCP contact to get a hold of Dillinger? Cute. End of line. 
Computer powerful enough to listen and speak in real-time conversational English still ends conversations with programming language because the writers bought a programming term glossary and damn it, they're going to use it. The director said, let's give this guy an apple so we know he's Bruce Boxleitner. Or I mean, an asshole. I mean, a Bruce Boxleitner kind of asshole. Great, so we can roll credits? Hey, Alan. You think I could have some of your popcorn? This f***ing guy. Holy sh! Look at the size of this cubicle room. There must be 100,000 square feet of cubicles back there. I get that the movie wants us to feel the depth of bureaucracy or something, but this is completely inefficient. Can you imagine trying to get anywhere in this room? Or the noise when it's full? Also, where's the exit for this cubicle? Does whoever works here parachute in? This is terrible cubicling all around. Fun fact, if you take out all of the silent walking in this movie, it's only 17 minutes long. This movie single-handedly kept step-based Foley artists in business throughout the early 80s. There's no way this touch-controlled surface would be constantly this pristine. I can't use my phone for 30 seconds without it turning into a Jackson Pollock, so I'm calling shenanigans on this black mirror. I can't afford to have an independent programmer monitoring me. Then maybe you should wait until the independent programmer has at least gotten off the floor and is not in potential earshot of you. Do you realize how many outside systems I've gone into? How many programs I've appropriated? Computational appropriation. Using analog dials for precision instead of digital measurements at an advanced computer facility. Well, here goes nothing. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Not pictured anything that would be considered the least bit interesting. Yes. Actually, what we propose to do is to change something into nothing and back again. Also known as Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. You might just as well have said, here goes something. Here comes nothing. Christopher Lloyd meets Richard Attenborough would be excellent at CinemaSins. And he had Group 7 access. Flynn had access to you, too. Was there a way to exposit the fact that Flynn and Laura had dated previously without making Alan come off like such an unlikable asshat? Because I bet there was, and this movie's inability to make good decisions in the script department is a huge reason it's such a cluster Also, comparing your significant other's previous sexual choices to being hacked. Don't put any change in the meter. We're gonna need it for the games. Our van might get towed, but I'll finally be able to have the top score on Joust, and I can make my initials F-U-K. Kinda hard to play pinball, kid, if the machine isn't even on. 999,000 points! 999,000 points isn't cool. You know what's cool. A billion dollars. Floor level couches. My knees hurt just looking at this thing. I don't get it. Okay. Sherman, set the Wayback Machine for three years ago. And the exposition machine to full throttle. He's so bright, as a matter of fact, that he starts going in at night, sets up his own private memory file, and begins writing a program. Look, Dillinger is 100% in the wrong and a total asshole, but Flynn knows better than to work on this using company property. If Flynn wants to start his own enterprise that could potentially be in competition with the company he's working for, he probably doesn't want to give Encom any shot at using his hard work for their own purposes. I still don't understand why you want to break into the system. Because, man, somewhere in one of these... Memories is the evidence! Unless it's been erased, right? I mean, you can actually erase things from computers. This is long before the cloud. User requests are what computers are for. Doing our business is what computers are for. No, pornography is what computers are for. Which, honestly, now that I think about it, encompasses both user requests and doing our business, so carry on, I guess. Yeah, just pull right up and park behind the building. Nothing conspicuous about that. Walter, it's getting late. I've got better things to do than to have religious discussions with you. I wish that were true for the rest of the characters in this movie. The last hour of this film is easily 67% religious discussions. Now that is a big door. Seriously. Although, to be fair, I don't know why Alan is concerned about someone hearing Flint. He should be more concerned about the cameras Dillinger has access to, but he isn't. I guess it doesn't matter because the cameras conveniently don't pick up any of their activity. I don't understand how these three don't get caught before the MCP has a chance to even pull Flynn into the computer. Also, is anyone going to close that giant door? Are you trying to be suspicious? Let in the wildlife? That room is gonna end up with more bugs in it than Windows 11. I'm not sure why they need to bother hacking into computer. Alan has the summoning words for the Book of the Dead plastered on his cubicle. They could get some deadites up in here and do whatever the hell they want. And yeah, yeah, I know those words originated in the sci-fi classic Escape from Witch Mountain. Don't spill anything. What is he going to spill? Is he planning on making a Starbucks run? What a stupid condescending thing to say. You shouldn't have come back, Flynn. So Master Control can just have conversations anywhere at once? Where are the speakers? The microphone? The respect for any semblance of intelligent screenwriting? Why would a laser be aimed at a computer terminal? Even if no one is operating the laser, that seems like an unnecessary risk. This CG's on for some time. I said move! Yeah. Look, if this is about those parking tickets, I can explain everything. If you wake up in a program that gives you a poke, don't panic. Kevin Flynn will tell you a joke. Somebody pushes me, I push back. Because apparently I've been programmed to be recklessly vindictive. Users wrote us. A user even wrote you! No one user wrote me. But Dillinger wrote the code for the MCP, so yes, one user did write them. 
The MCP is the equivalent of a third grade bully. And that's not a very interesting antagonist. Want me to slow down your power cycles for you? If the MCP is an almighty powerful being, then why does it need Sark or anyone to do its bidding? Why doesn't it just kill whoever it wants to kill and move on? I get that it probably has weaknesses and all that jazz, but the movie never explains that very well. Video game unit 18, in here program. I understand Star Wars is a huge influence on just about every science fiction film from the early 80s, and it's hard to hide that, but you could try harder than just having the guards sound exactly like stormtroopers. And as we find out later, they shoot about as well as them too. Really think the users are still there? But if there are games, there have to be users, right? We see at the beginning of the film that a random program is put in to go up against Sark when the user puts a quarter in the video game. I guess it's possible that the belief system of these programs doesn't compute that rationale, but then I have to ask, how are programs able to believe anything unless a user sets a parameter of beliefs into their coding? I think this movie goes both too far with its ideals and not far enough. You had the Matrix, Lizberger, and you f***ed it up. Also, if the user is controlling the program in the game, then what is the point of having the program train? They will only be as good as the user playing the game is. And look, we can argue all day that the movie is saying something different, but I take you back to the beginning with the quarter in the machine and what took place after that. The movie has made no mention of anything else different since. So, even if nothing else, the movie gets another sin for being confusing as hell. Continue to profess a belief in the users will receive the standard substandard training. So, just substandard training then. It's a pretty neat twist. Ram is showing Flynn with the disc and all. But I'm really more curious how he managed to make those gloves appear on his hands. Let him fight one of his own kind. That's racist. Also, what does that statement even mean? Flynn is a user. There are no other users available for him to fight. No! No. I want him in the games until he dies playing. You know, for reasons. <laughs> This is the digital space, right? So why would this break a physical hole into the wall of the program? What the hell is even going on here? I'm getting out of here right now and you guys are invited. How do you even know it was an exit? How deep does that shattered wall go? I haven't seen an unexpected crack that large since my cousin Roger forgot to wear a belt and lost his keys under the couch. Send out every game tank in the grid! Is he talking to Pac-Man? What even are these roads they're traveling on? Seems pretty convenient these pathways are here and wide enough for them to escape on. I'm guessing a computer landscape would be pretty vast, but that doesn't make this any less convenient or sinful. I'll be lucky if the MCP doesn't blast me into a dead zone. I mean, you're still a year away from David Cronenberg creating the dead zone, so you're probably safe for now. Boy, you forget how good the power feels. Until you get to a pure source. This scene is a direct metaphor for the creators of this movie's cocaine breaks, isn't it? Does this mean that Flynn has to take in power the same way all the other programs do? Because that would mean that the MCP didn't only bring him into this universe, but actually turned him into a program. How would he survive that? What happened to all his internal organs and things? How would he survive being constructed back into a user at the end of the movie? Why is Flynn? Thank you. Drinking after Ram. No sign of life. Looks like we got him. Yep, no need to investigate. Programs are all about the assumptions. Those tanks won't find us here. Why not exactly? None of those areas look tank-proof. You see this? You shouldn't be able to do that. To be clear, movie is saying Flynn cannot do an unspecified thing that he shouldn't be able to do because he's doing it, and also then knows exactly what he's doing in a way that moves the story forward with as little explanation as possible. In other words, some bull This is just like the old arcade grips. Conveniently. Flynn? Help Tron? We're over 56 minutes in, so I'm not sure the movie can be helped at this point, but I'm sure Jeff Bridges will at least give it his best try. Ram. I would like to say this death scene is moving, but I honestly forgot the character's name was Ram. Damn, recognizer. Which you should have no way of knowing how to pilot, and yet you are, and haven't crashed yet, so consider that a win, Flynn. Limited four and eight are missing. No, I... Tron. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, f*** you, movie, and the light cycle you rode in on. This is where Tron said he was going. Talking to yourself for expositional purposes. No one in front of them hears this. I don't believe this. I've been saying this under my breath the whole movie, but it still keeps going. I think the guard saw me. How is it possible to get through any of this programming secretly? Doesn't the MCP have control over all of it? Ah, oh, come on, movie. You've got Barnard f***ing Hughes in your movie, and when he gets his program revealed, he's whatever this penile monstrosity is supposed to be. Not cool, movie. Not cool! I've come to communicate with my user. How does that work exactly? Alan does just happen to be at the computer right now, but how would Tron be aware of this? Bring in the logic probe! Something that was never said once during the writing of this movie still somehow makes it into the script. When I was 12, I was convinced that these were boobs of a giant blue woman, and this was her nipple. It was a dark time before the internet, kids. A dark time indeed. I'd say this works if I had any idea what any of this even was. I'm gonna sin it either way, but I'll be honest, I have the slightest idea what's going on since about minute 37. <laughs> 
What? This thing. This thing. This thing. Excitement? I hate to disappoint you, pal, but most of the time that's the way it is for users, too. Stranger and stranger. Agree and agree. Can we skip and then skip? So, nice looking ship you got here. Not ending this sentence with, it'd be a shame if something happened to it. Creating a junction. As one does, of course. I haven't decided if Tron is a short film that used extended tech demos to get to feature length, or if it's a long tech demo that threw in some plot to call itself a movie. But I'm leaning towards I don't give a f just end it already. I'd give all the sins back if when the discount face of Bo stopped spinning, he blew digital chunks. Why do the programs have skeletons? I have no idea why this disc throw is the one that takes Sark down and the other disc throws did not, but at this point, whatever. Making out with the computer program. Yay! The Valley of Orange Webbing is restored, and the red is bluing, and the silver dildos have restored their red rings, and the floating balls of the southern plains will once again pinken. Oh, glorious day. Having the sound of a dot matrix printer when in actuality it's a daisy wheel printer doing the work. I'm sure Flynn would get all the money owed to him once the information was presented that he had created the video games. But would that get him an automatic CEO position at Encom? I don't believe it would. Also, as this movie ends, I'm reminded that this aired as a primetime movie in 1983, the first day the Disney Channel launched. And despite that, the Disney Channel kept getting subscribers. See, Disney goes out of their way to torture viewers and you all still keep coming back for more. Your spine is more twisted than Sinbad's take on marriage.